So today we'll be looking at another race that is not at all native to our land of Eorzea, but are here in such large numbers and have been here so long that you'd be excused in thinking they were. A race that is both one of the tallest and one of the shortest races we know of. The only race that could be described as horny without being super creepy. Today we'll be looking at the Aura. <laughs> Ah, the Aura. Eorzea's lizards folk who are actually mammals. A mammal that is characterized by having scales. Just like the real world pangolin. And just like the pangolin, the Aura have a history of being hunted. The pangolin being hunted because certain people want to eat these poor adorable things. The Aura being hunted because Certain people, in a very specific city-state, think the scales look like dragon scales, and really want a new trophy. I'll have your rear ends cut off and mounted over me fireplace! Thankfully, just like the tiny pangolin, the Aura have developed a secret weapon to fight against their hunters. They're either really tiny and adorable, or have resting bitch face syndrome. The pangolin decided on a much more offensive defense. Eating them has caused COVID-19. As you can see, these two defense options are virtually indistinguishable, as playing with either could result in you having no taste. Anywho, let us learn more about our Aura friends. Where do they come from? How do they get here? How do I interact with them? What's their culture like? Starting with how they got here. There are zero Auras who are native to Eorzea, and all are from our star's easternmost continent, Orphad. However, long ago, some of the Zela Auri did attempt to migrate and live in Eorzea. During the Sixth Astral Era, a tribe migrated westward somehow missing literally all of this, then sailing up here, missing all this land, and landed in the single worst possible area for their kind, the Ishgardian land of Corfas. Needless to say, the Ishgardians who, firstly, do not at all like outsiders, and secondly, do not at all like dragons, were not too happy to see a bunch of outsiders who look like dragons trying to settle in their lands. Yeah. The Ishgardians did what Ishgardians do best with dragons. No mercy! Cleanse the monstrosity! Death to the enemy! <laughs> From then on, no Aura have migrated towards the Orzia but for some reason arrived en masse when the borders of Ishgard opened. But now we must ask, why are there so many of them? If you ask the Aura, they will give one of two answers. The Zela will claim they have moved away from their clan to start their own, and the Rain will claim to be refugees fleeing the Garlean advance. The truth, though, can be found in the Aura creation story. The Aura believe themselves to be direct descendants of their gods, the Dawn Father and the Dusk Mother. They honestly believe that their veins run with the blood of gods. So, just like the Makote, they see new land ready for conquest and obviously it's theirs by right. Unfortunately for the Aura, the Makote arrived in Eorzea first and had already laid claim. But that did not stop the Aura from growing to be the second most prolific race of all of the Eorzean races. So, now how do I interact with our lizard but not really lizard friends? Well, interacting with the Aura is a very simple endeavor. Though very different depending on which of the two clans the Aura in question comes from. So, 
To best understand how to interact with our Aura friends, we should first learn a bit of their culture, and we can make inferences from there. The Rain, identified by their white scales. These people believe that, when their two gods did the dirty, they somehow only got the blood of the Dawn Father. The Rain Auri embrace a life of tranquility, and have long since left their ancestral home of the steppe. These Aura have settled past the eastern mountains of the steppe, and their villages now dot the valleys. Others of their tribe have moved into the Hingashi Isles, and live amongst the other races in Kugane. Some Rain Auri decide to take this peace and tranquility to its completely logical extreme. We really like living in peace and want to be as far away from others as possible, said a tribe. So let's settle on the bottom of the freaking ocean. We'll do you one better, said another tribe. We'll live in the bottom of a trench in the bottom of the ocean. Yeah, the rain deeply value peace and tranquility. The Zela, identified by their black scales. These people believe that when their gods bumped uglies, they somehow only got the blood of the Dusk Mother. The Zela Auri are a nomadic people, living in many different tribes in their ancestral homeland, the Azim Steppe. There are a total of 51 tribes, though this number isn't static and is constantly rising and falling with the founding and destruction of new tribes. Do note that each of these tribes are wholly unique, so I'll just be explaining the very general culture of the Zela. The Zela are people who value their cultural heritage of being a nomadic people very highly. They live in very close-knit tribes, hunting, gathering and moving together, and often warring with other Zela tribes for whatever reason they want to, really. To just summarize these clans, Oh, an important note, there is one unique gesture that transcends the Aura clan divide. To show affections, the Aura rub their horns against another. So a head boop from an Aura may actually be an admittance of a romantic interest. You may be getting some scale tail with built-in handlebars. Now, let's move on to their unique naming conventions. As we've mentioned earlier, there are two Aura tribes, the Rain and the Zela. Let's start with the Rain. The Rain Auri's names are inspired by 16th to 18th century Japanese names. Writing down these names have also been hep-burned. This means that the spelling of the name, when turned into the Latin alphabet, is spelled exactly how you would actually say it. All Rain names have meaning behind them. Let's take uh, Yugiri, for example. Yugiri, in Japanese, would be this in kanji, which means evening mist. Fugetsu, which is a male rain name, would be this, meaning wind moon. Male names are typically things that are strong, agile, or uncontrollable, whereas female names are typically linked to weather, birds, and things representing beauty and kindness. Though, when you stop and think about it, this official description of their names doesn't really mean much. After all, most weather is uncontrollable, and most birds are quite agile. So, uh, yeah, that line is real blurry. Rain's surnames are technically not allowed or even acknowledged. Only the families of the ruling class are allowed to have surnames and are generally related to warfare in some form. An example is Mitsurugi, meaning free swords. Regardless of this though, many rain take surnames based on their profession. So a farmer would often be Neuri, and the name of the typical female Aura ER peer would be Kami Otoko. Finally, moving on to the Zela. 
The Zela names are based off of roughly 15th century Mongolian names. A few examples are shown here. Fun fact though is that many Zela Auri actually have the exact same name. This is because the tribes still have a shared history of names and, unlike other races and clans, the Zela Auri did not have a writing component of their language until relatively recently. Their entire histories, names and culture was passed down orally. Thus, over many generations, each tribe's culture diverged from the other. And on top of that, each and every single Zela Auri chooses the spelling of his or her own name. So this name, Jagatai, and this name, Jagatai, and this name, Jagatai, are the exact same name. The surname of a Zela Auri would be that of the tribe they associate with. The 51 tribes are listed here, though some Zela do not use any of these and give themselves a new last name. Perhaps they are the last member of a tribe that was recently destroyed or absorbed. Please again keep in mind that each and every single one of these tribes are unique in on themselves and have unique quirks. For example, the Boduga tribe is 100% only male, zero females. A real sausage party. The Goro tribe believe horses are ideal and perfect beings. Therefore, when a boy or a girl in this tribe comes of age, they are married to a horse of the opposite sex. Needless to say though, be careful what tribe you pick. You may have an interesting culture. And that's it. That's what there is to know about the hour R. I hope you enjoyed. Please leave a like and a comment. They help a tiny channel like this one far more than you could possibly believe. So goodbye then, friends, and have a great day. Bum 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 bum